Well, this afternoon I, uh, or this morning I guess it was, I discussed the fact that we eventually delivered the compiler uh, that we were scheduled to deliver within six months. Of course, to me it was a great pleasure. I had been sent out from the West Coast to the East Coast to work on this, and uh, it had been uh, a temporary assignment since anything six, six months or less was considered temporary duty. Therefore, we lived totally on rented goods for about two and a half years, <laughs> <laughs> including a rented car. We had a baby while we were in New Jersey on the East Coast, and we never expected that all our baby things were back in California. Six months, you don't expect to have a baby. <laughs> <laughs> so finally, we came to the point of delivering this compiler to the Strategic Air Command in Omaha. And if any of you have seen the movie Fail Safe for the, for the more humorous version uh, with Peter Sellers about the underground in Omaha, it's kind of an intimidating place. You go down some number of levels and at every level you sign in and there are armed guards all over and you must be escorted by an officer, not a, not a civilian, not an enlisted man, which can be a difficult problem if you're caught in a room with a civilian all day and you can't get out to do certain things. <laughs> so in general, they keep you well intimidated. Well, the finally, the day of the delivery was a festive day for all sides, including myself, because this meant I could go back to the West Coast and use our own furniture and car. Uh, uh, and all I had to do was turn over the compiler, which seemed easy. We took all the stuff with us some test cases in case they wanted to run them sometime. We got downstairs, uh, ended up the third, as low as you can go, and uh, being escorted by a number of people. And then somebody announced in about half an hour the general's coming to look at the demonstration. Now, I don't know how many people have tried to demonstrate a batch kind of compiler on the 709, actually the 7090 by the time we delivered it. <laughs> But there's really, you know, with interactive things, it's a lot of fun to demonstrate. We've all done that, and that's good. But a batch compiler, there's very little you can show. Nevertheless, in about half an hour, we cooked up the scheme. We had about six cent switches, as I recall, on the machine. One for printing errors online as you compile, another for reading the card reader or reading from tape, another printing the listing online or offline, things like that. And finally, we, we hooked up that sort of thing. We had a test case which had errors, and we, we were all set for the general. The general came down, and we ran these things, and he was quite impressed. We, we read in the cards online and say, now the cards are reading online. He did not know anything about computers, as far as I know. Uh, and he was impressed. And we say, now we're reading them offline. And uh, then we started printing the listings online, and Flicked the sense switch. Sense switch six gave us the errors online, and we flicked that, and sense switch six up meant the errors were going off. When I was running around explaining, actually feeling quite good at that point, because he was impressed by the tape spinning and all that sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> and the error message is coming out online or offline. And during all this, uh, a major wandered over to me and kind of quietly said, by the way, Mr. Schwartz, before you leave, we've written a little program here we'd like to try. And of course, one of the things you always, I'm sure those in this situation, always hope when you're delivering or building a product that's perhaps not perfect. <laughs> are going to be a little late is that no matter how bad you are, you're ahead of the customer and he's not ready. In other words, he's really not ready to use it yet. So I figured they were going to bring in a little program. We knocked that off. Uh, uh, well, finally, and everybody was happy. The demonstration had gone quite well. And the major said, I'll go get the program now. And I said, fine, go get it. Well, he walked back through the door with a tray of, of about 3,000 cards. And I, I am known as not too demonstrative. I'm actually a fairly easygoing guy. But I'm sure in front of all those officers and the general, there was an audible gasp. <laughs> and I said, that's a rather large program. <laughs> to start, I said, I said, how did you do that? I didn't even think they knew how to use the language. He said, well, we all got together, all the officers in the underground, I guess, <laughs> and contributed. <laughs> so it 
turned out, of course, our compiler, as I mentioned earlier, compiled the compiler, which was a massive task, but it was well-tuned to that compiler. <laughs> and no other very large program had ever run through it. Uh, so, sure enough, we started running that, and I was a little more reserved now, but I started running around flicking sense switches, and I said, let's flick error sense switches on, and the first thing, of course, after about 50 cards, it said, oh, error number something or other, which meant, uh, I said, you probably have an error, I don't know what. <laughs> and then a little while later, just shortly thereafter, it came out, another one like that, I said, you've made some mistakes. Then I noticed an error come out and it said, table MNT0 overflow. <laughs> and uh, shortly thereafter, table SMT1 overflow. <laughs> You have some errors. <laughs> and at, at that point, within a minute or seconds or whatever it was, every card that came in out of this 3,000 <laughs> was printing out another error. <laughs> so at that point, I said, well, you now see how it is when it gets errors at Princeton. Let's throw the sense with you. <laughs> and that concludes the demonstration. But that, that was a harbinger of what was to come. But nevertheless, so I, I arranged to have that printout come off and be given to the people who were taking over from me. <laughs> Went back to New Jersey and packed up and did leave with all the new children and everything. <laughs> and I was away from Jovial at that point. I always wondered for a while what happened to the people that got that printout. <laughs> well, about... Two months later, I was asked, or maybe even less than that, I was asked to come back for a visit, first to New Jersey, and then we were going to have a trip to Omaha. Uh, <laughs> I had been away from it for a while, but uh, I said yes. Of course I said yes. I was still getting paid. Uh, <laughs> I flew back, and we had a delegation of about four or five of us flew back out to uh, Omaha. The same intimidating atmosphere. I get intimidated by these things. We again signed in. I noticed a much colder feeling as I was going <laughs> uh, Every level, of course, an armed guard, or several. And I'd sign in, and, and I was not quite sure. I was obviously not going to be another demonstration. I had nothing to demonstrate. I was not quite sure of the purpose of our meeting. Well, finally, when we got down to the bottom on this time, I was asked to come into a room, and, and they separated me from the rest of the crew. <laughs> and I went in with this one other officer who was the commander of that, at that level, probably a colonel. And he said, wait, I want to get the rest of the fellows. <laughs> and there was a round table that sat maybe this size table, about 10 people. And I was on one end of it, or one side of it, or whatever it is around the circle. And, and then about nine officers, uh, anywhere from captain on up, marched in. And each one took a seat, and I was introduced to each one. And then the colonel started and said, the man on my left. Captain Tompkins, would you tell Mr. Schwartz what's happened since you started using it? <laughs> <laughs> and of course, he began to recite, and I said, oh. <laughs> and then the next major, whatever it was, would you tell Mr. Schwartz what's happened? And they went around, oh my. And if you ever saw a person try to find a way to slip under the table, <laughs> Well, it turned out all I could do was sympathize with them. I realized it must be very awkward for them to have a compiler that gave them this many problems. <laughs> but on top of it, when I left that underground that day, I was reassigned to the project to maintain the compiler. <laughs> so I didn't quite get away.